Ratchet and bash it! Hey everybody, Ryan here at Crash and Bash Hobbies back again. So today we got something a little different. We did a podcast after our Saturday on-road race. There was uh, four of us that sat down and just chatted about the day and uh, kind of just went over what happened, kind of what's going on at the track and things like that. So I just uh, decided to put it on YouTube, do a little video here, put some pictures to it and whatnot, and uh, try to have a little fun with it at the same time. Hopefully you like it. Maybe we'll do an actual podcast going forward, but we'll see how it goes. So let me know in the comments what you think. Remember to like and subscribe to our content so you can keep getting really cool stuff. <laughs> uh, or just mediocre stuff. Either way, subscribe please. We'll see you later. Hope you enjoy. reminds me of high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, we're, we're on. We're recording. Oh, so, yeah. all right. Welcome to Trackside, the after show, after race. After race. After race show. After race pod. Yeah, I sure. Don't know. I don't know. We just decided to do something. And Crash and bash track go, right? so. Talking over Nick, the, the host. My bad. Well, I don't know that I would be the host. I think Ryan's the host here. I think really, so. Really, for this I'm one. He's been the host the entire day, so he's not going to be able to talk yeah. any of us out of it. Nick, so. Nick, Nick's just a technical <laughs> advisor. <laughs> The unfortunate thing is, is that we don't have any uh, cold beverages around oh, to I got loosen. A monster. Oh, that, that's the wrong no, kind, yeah, but that's is. okay. You need a name for the program and an agenda next time. Oh, and I don't that work seems well like way with way too much planning. Yeah, I don't. I don't work well with much planning, so that's, Agen- we're just going to throw it out we're there and see it. how it goes. Right? Agenda item one: cooler. <laughs> agenda item two: adult beverages. I, I'm we sure go. we have some people that could make a run. Uh, B double E double R U N. Yeah, B B double O. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we just had a really really cool days worth of racing around awesome. here with some really really crazy competition in a couple of classes. So it's crazy good. Where do we want to start? I, I'm I'm down for whatever. We had uh yeah. What did we have? Twenty racers. Yep. Or 22. Yeah, 22 so entries. Summertime race, right? Summertime. Like, it's literally 87 degrees in here because there's no air conditioning. We do have heat, so it'll be nice in the wintertime. It's great in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, little summer racing. Uh, one cla- A lot of people are just running one class. So we ha- almost had as many people here as we had entries. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yep. I'd rather have 20 people and 22 entries than five people and 20 entries, right? Right. So... Uh, yeah, we're good with that. This has been a ton of fun today. The uh, last three races, I just needed a cigarette. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Between the USGT, Sportsman Fortech, and the ProTech guys, I mean, you, it I was think you insane. actually said one time, like, is anybody else worn out? Because <laughs> I am wasted after these Dude. last two races. Oh, man, this is a ton of fun. I've only been doing this race director thing for a little bit, and yeah. I think that was one of the most fun parts that I've ever done. Well, that so. USGT group today all of them were within seconds Absolutely. of each other the entire day right like um oh well, i think nate nate was here really yeah. just trying to get his car dialed in and took the fastest lap of the day Absolutely. in usgt and you know even though he wasn't able to finish the races yeah. he's got some things to build on right for sure and then who else did we have in there we had clint dustin clint yep. dustin alex and yep. darren Yep. So most of the fast guys that are here, other than Nick. <laughs> yeah, I don't and, run USGT anymore. Uh, so yeah, it's all good. But yeah, we. I mean, that was awesome. Every yeah. all the fast laps were within a tenth of a second of each yeah. other. So we had we had what? Uh, Clint was TQ, and then it was Darren second. Yep. And then Dustin was third. Dustin. And I think there was less than two seconds between all oh, three absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Yeah. For qualifying time. For and sure. that's kind of how it shook out at the end too, if I remember right. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, Alex got in there for third. Right. And yep. Yeah, he took third from. Uh, <laughs> Get a little dap. That's right. Nice. I uh, took third from Dustin. Or uh, yeah, Dustin had a couple bobbles there. Yep. And uh, couldn't couldn't get back in the groove yep. once he got out. And you can't catch those guys. No. Once they were all cruising, they were gone. Yeah. So yeah, it was and cool. They're all running such close laps that they're, sure. like a bobble just takes you completely <laughs> out of the race. You get you behind know. and it, just kiss them goodbye. We have a we have a really fast guy here at the table with us, uh, running the Four Tech Pro class yeah, today, right. right? So, Mr. Simmons, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the the Pro Tech race? Uh, the Pro Tech race was fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there Color was some, commentary. some controversy at the end. 
<laughs> it was a little bit. It was a, it, that was a tough one. I guess I would have probably had to make a call on it, and I think it was fine. Yeah. I think it was fine just the way it shook out. Yeah. You were definitely the faster car. Yeah. It did and not I think feel Dustin like will that. say that. It did not feel like that at the beginning <laughs> because right. Alex and Dustin were in front of me, and I tried everything I could do to keep up with them, and right. I just told myself, I should probably just slow down and make some clean laps, and then I got fast. Right. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. That's how that one worked out. Isn't it funny how, like, it doesn't matter what kind of RC car racing you do, slow is fast. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. Smooth. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as it feels like you're driving around slow, you're like, oh, look, I'm fast. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, lap times get a I lot put my lot first uh, nine dollars in parts in the Fortech in the <laughs> year and a half I've had it. So. Jeez, dude, break! Don't break the bank! <laughs> oh, Holy crap! You need yeah. to hit more stuff. <laughs> That's <laughs> budget <laughs> racing right there at its finest. It is That's surprising because sure. what are the lap times? The lap times are up there with. VCA. I think you were like yeah. down there what? Yeah. Four ten. Four point yeah. ten. Or geez. my dyslexia is bad. Ten, yeah, is that right? ten point four. Ten fours, yeah. Ten That's three. what VTA's running, right? Absolutely. Ten fours, ten fives, yeah. yeah. But not for two hundred dollars, or not? <laughs> no, no, not for two hundred dollars. <laughs> right. They, they've got two hundred dollars in, in motor, batteries, and tires. Right. For They'll that. take so, the over most yeah. of them. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure. But the four tech glass is fun. I mean, I literally freed up some bearings last night, and that's it. Yeah. The Fortech class has been awesome for this track, getting started. It's yeah. made the on-road the biggest we that should, we do here. We should so. probably talk about the Fortech classing a little yeah. bit, because we do it different than anybody else in the nation, as far as I can tell. Absolutely. So we've got like a box stock class, and 100%. that is you just you just bought one from the hobby store, you put it on the track and go race it. Right? 100%. Like, yep. it's got to have the stock body, the stock tires, stock radio, stock servo. Yep. Yep. We literally want yeah. them to take it out of the box, put it on the track. Yeah. So and we, that's it. That, I think that's... Really, the the awesome thing about that is that like anybody can come race that day if they want and never have any racing experience before. Sure. Yeah. And that's been our de facto novice class. Right. Uh, Aaron and Forrest and I had a long conversation about doing a novice class, and we just decided that that's our novice class. Yeah. You know, because it's an easy class to get into, and it's a good solid platform to start with. Because as we're going to talk about, then you can step up to the sportsman or the pro. Yep. So it, it gets you three classes in one. So what's the difference so. between pro and sportsman then? Uh, well, so once we go into sportsman from box, we're talking uh, tires and body. That's mm -hmm. the only changes. No electronic changes at all. And then so they can run their own radios, though, right? Correct. In oh, sportsman. true. Yep. yep. I forgot about they that. They can't part. change a servo, but they nope. can run their own radios. Can run their own radios. They can run a body and run USGT tires. Right. So then once we step up to pro, you can kind of do whatever. You just keep the chassis XL5. Uh, ESC and the Titan 12 turn right. motor. Yep. And then uh, other than that, it's free game. Same power package. Same same yep. electronics. Change your servo, but uh, everything else. Keep in mind, the winner today in the Pro Fortech class mm -hmm. had the stock servo. Yes. And mm -hmm. second place, or no, third place. Yeah. Alex was the same way. You don't, he has have, a stock you don't servo. really have to do it. You do no. not. What, it, what it's kind of come down to in the sportsman and the pro is like the guys that are the better drivers are kind of going to the pro mm -hmm. and still keeping the same everything, yep. Yep. you know. Most of the, you know, servo changes are happening after somebody breaks one and they're like, sure. I just want something better. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because it costs, uh, what, 25 bucks, 30 bucks for gears mm -hmm. for the stock servo, but you can kind of upgrade your servo for 50. Yeah, right? I think right. I put a Power so, HD servo in my 50 bucks. And yeah. It drives and feels like a $100 servo or right. $150 servo. Yeah. So for me, that was kind of a no-brainer. Don't yeah. worry about it no more. Yeah, I think I, the last time I ran Pro Fortech, I took one of your Sportsman Fortech cars and went out and won. Same in one Pro that Fortech. Alex used yeah. today. <laughs> yep, yep. So yeah, really with the powertrain being the same, it's all down to driver. It, it really is. is in all those classes. So Servo helps a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. you can, as long as you know, right? Yep. <laughs> as long as you get used to that slow servo, yep. you can make it work. Yep. Yeah, you know, so... Just be a great driver is always always the thing, right? <laughs> That's just what it comes down just, to. Just be, wonderful, man. Man. Just be wonderful. Just be a wonderful driver. That's right. Cool. It only takes time. So what else? What else did we run today? We we ran our first twenty five five Saturday sedan race. Absolutely. Right? And there was only two of us. Eric is beside me here and we were the two that ran it. So what do you think of it? Well, that's fun, you know, coming from racing a Fortech and a VTA. Yeah. You know, they're a little bit faster, handle a little better, corner better. Yep. You know, uh, long term. You know, my goal is to get into 21.5 sedan and faster, so it's an yep. easy upgrade platform from there. Yeah, it's it's super easy to upgrade to the next class, right? So if you start with 25.5 sedan, it's just a motor to go to 21.5. And then if you decide you want to run 17.5, it's just in a motor again. We're running the exact same rules, exact same bodies, exact same tires between all three classes. So, yeah. And then for yeah. Eric, right, the, from VTA to 25.5, which is wheels and tires and body. 
Correct. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. And you can take Wait. a whole bunch of weight out of your car. <laughs> right. yeah. That's the best part. So. So these guys that are running like the third gen, really nice, awesome chassis. You know, they're already there, right? They don't have to add the weight to get to VTA. That was part of the, the positive part why Nick wanted to try it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Makes yep. sense. Yeah, it just, it, and it's so hard, you know, the scale classes are amazing. I, I, I love the scale looks of the bodies and how the cars run and all that other stuff, but it's so hard to, like, move from class to class when you're running the scale stuff because it's body, motor, and tires every time you want to do it. And, you know, if you step up from VTA into USGT, a lot of times it's chassis, too, because if you were running an older car in VTA, you're going to have a hard time in USGT, especially with the group of guys we've got here. Absolutely. It's crazy. So... Um, so yeah, 25.5 is just kind of a nice way to get into touring car racing. Um, it gets you a nice base setup that you can take right up to 21.5 with you if you decide you want to go faster. And, you know, if you don't, it reminds me a lot of like the old 27 turn days. And a lot of the older guys that have raced, like the speed is much more like that used to be. Yeah. So it's, it's a good entry level sedan. Cool. Yeah. I'm down, man. Yeah, it's a good time. And it's becoming more popular nationally, right? Yeah. So. That's, well, I think... I'm trying to remember the guy's name who started it. Uh, Vaughn Perry was mm. the one who started over in Ohio. Okay. And it's kind of just been taken off like wildfire everywhere. Nice. So, yeah. Hopefully hopefully it's something that we can run at, you know, big regional races too. You know, we you go know. traveling around. We can have some fun with that right. too. Not everything has got to be local. Not everything has to be national, right? right. We have to find our own niche here at Crash yep. and Bash. Yep. And that's, what, For sure. that's what our goals are, right? We yeah. want to do both. So what are we excited to see coming up? Because I, I think we've got some classes that we haven't seen on the track yet that we're kind yeah. of excited to see. I'm GT12 all day. Yeah. Man. I can't yeah. wait for GT12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Jim Good had his out he earlier, <laughs> and it looked super good on the track. Super good. Should we review what GT12 is going to be? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You don't sure, know. Right? It's rubber tires. <laughs> rubber tire. JST rubbers. Is it the USGT motor? USGT motor. Now, what about, is it spool, diff? Anything? I don't think gearing? we've set that. That's what uh, I'm saying. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't set those yet. Um, I think we're going to kind of use the rest of the summer to feel that out. I'd like to do, I think it'd be fun to do a, um, a set uh, set gears, right? Sure. It's just the tech side of it. So yeah. we'd have to come up with, I know some people out there are making colored spur gears. Yep. So we might have to require that. Yeah, MMR does that for their um, Can-Am class. Yep, yep. yep. Yep, so you have, like, a, a base gearing that you have to run in Can-Am yep. there. Yeah. But that's also, when you sign up for that class, they hand you the motor, too. So you don't oh. even get to take your own motors. And then you have to turn them in at the end of every night, too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's cool. You have, you have to keep bullet. people from messing with them. You have yeah. bullets on your motors. Huh. Yep. 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 That's kind of cool. I don't know if you need to go that far. Yeah, I don't know that can Am something we're going to ever do, yeah. or in the short term, at least. Sure. But GT12, for sure. GT12 I think it's going to be, be big. Fun. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be some 17, 5, 12 scale. Now that we've yeah. kind of got the subfloor, and by the way, thank you, Ryan, for all your hard work on the subfloor here. Super smooth. Yeah, it's, it's uh, super smooth out here now. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was Eric had, was here the whole yeah. time with yep. me. You yep. know, he oh. he took some time off work and helped me out. Uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. <laughs> we would have been done at noon drinking beer, except for Ryan can't count. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to tell that story on here? No, I, I think I do. I want to. He wants to. So we, uh, Ryan guy was going to get everything ready, and I took the day off to come down and help him. We started laying floors. Like, man, it looks like we're going out of uh, OSB really fast. Yeah, he, he half the quantity. Oh, <laughs> man. But, so it gets better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me back up a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's to have an excuse for this now. Oh, so. no, it's, I was dumb. That's oh. the excuse. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I divided four twice instead of four by eight. Mm. I just did four by four. Whoops. Yeah. You know, yeah, it happens. It happens. The public school education. So well. we got the first load all done, and we ran, had lunch. Oh, and then yeah, we, I forgot about and then, So then we go over to Menards, and we can only fit, you know, a quarter or a half of what we needed for the rest in the truck. And stop, stop, light, take off, all comes out of the back of the truck oh, onto the road. No. You missed the most important part. As we're at Menards, we're loading it up. And I don't know if you said something or if I just, you know, put it out in the ether. You know, thanks. Thanks for that. But, yeah, I just said, oh, yeah, this will, it'll be fine. I've never had plywood fall out of the back of this truck. <laughs> We're sitting at a stoplight uh, crossing over Edgewood Road, if anybody knows what, where that is, on an incline. 
And I hit the gas, and sure enough, it just all dumped. <laughs> so there's Eric and I on Edgewood Road, on Edgewood Road. At right lunchtime. At lunchtime. Traffic right, everywhere. Traffic everywhere. I'm like, oh, yeah, stop, I'm stupid. <laughs> I wish somebody would have had, like, a video recording of that. It's got to be on YouTube somewhere. Somewhere. Some, somebody some caught it. Some kid had to have been like, oh, look this at is these dummies. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah. Look at these dummies. Well, and then we're not done yet because Ryan had to go, I think, pick your daughter up or something. Yeah. One of the kids. Yeah, yeah. And me and Aaron went over to back to Menards to get the rest of the plywood. Yeah. And we show up and Aaron's like, oh, where's the ticket? It's like, oh, what ticket? We didn't get it yet. So we had to come back. To <laughs> <laughs> Aaron had thought I had purchased all yeah. the rest of the plywood. I had only purchased what I was going to pick up. Oh, yeah. So it was a miscommunication. Yeah, sure. He didn't. I still had the credit card because mm-hmm. I went and picked up the first thing. So he didn't have the credit card even, I don't think. So <laughs> by the time I got back, we had to go back to Menard. It was a, it was a calamity. But, hey, but it all worked out. So what had been done at noon is what you're saying. Yeah. And what time did it end up getting done? About four. Next day? Four, oh, five. four or yeah. five, yeah. yeah. We got it all done one day. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. We had That's a, a lot we had of quite a system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How big is our track? Uh, 48 by 90. 48 by 90. Ish. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. It's yeah. quite a bit of work to it's get a, done. It's a little bit yeah. of square footage. Yeah. And it's, like, it's super smooth now. Like, you guys yes. went through sanded seams, did all of the things. Did. Like, it's it's really nice. We put now. the subfloor down in one day. But, yeah, the next day I came in and rented a floor sander and sanded every single seam. Even if I didn't think it needed it, I still went over it to make sure it knocked down any high spots. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. It turned out great. I'm, I'm super proud. Yeah, uh, you should be. The facility be. is... We're going to keep doing more and more stuff, too. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. And that's I think that's one of the things that I can say about this facility that we haven't been able to say in facilities past is that we have ownership that really is really wants us to be one of the best places in the nation to come race. And You nailed it. Yeah. We just yeah. They just keep making improvements. You keep making improvements to the track, and, yeah. and it just keeps getting better. Um, can we talk about traction a little bit today, too? Absolutely. Like having the track up for two weeks before this race. I don't. I don't know that I've had traction here that we like we've had today. That good. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, luckily, going forward, this is exactly how it's going to be nice. every week. Yeah. Every race is going to be two weeks lead up to the last Saturday. So yeah. In the winter season, we're going to do two weeks of each discipline. So we're going to have on on road up for two weeks, off road up for two weeks, and then just one week old. So we can get those guys in too. But to what Nick's saying, you know, we're going to have that same traction level we had this time for every discipline. Well, well the best part is you set it up the first week race on it that weekend yeah. then you have a whole week you can come in practice work on setup on a track yeah. that has a groove in it 100 you know versus coming down and trying to work on your car when the track's kind of fresh yeah it's tough when you have the first you like the layout put in right after the changeover yeah. like it's so hard to come here and even just run laps because it's like running a drift track for the for first sure. five or six packs but for sure. You know, that's just the way it is. It is. Yeah. And when you have one track for all the disciplines, yeah. you know, it is what it is. We yeah. wish we had enough space to have different tracks set up. And, you know, someday, you never know. But as it is, we're going to keep switching. So pretty much what you're saying is is it doesn't really matter what discipline you're running. You're going to have two weeks on and three weeks off in the yes. wintertime for the yep. most part. Unless you're oval, you have this one week. One, one week, week on, for oval. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's and really cool. It's because we have so much oval in the area. Yeah. You know, we want to include those people here. But, you know, you can go over to Bullring. Uh, there's Muscatine has their dirt oval year-round. Yep. Palo. Yep. So, yeah, in the yep. summers, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the summer, yeah, we have we have Hunters. Palo. We have, yeah, Storm Steel. There's guys down in Fort Madison, I think. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So, there's yeah. a lot of places to race if you're Tons not a racer. Places. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'd be surprised if Waterloo didn't have another oval at some point sure. in the next couple of years, too. I know they just had one that closed not that long ago. But there's a lot of oval racers from up there, so it's bound Absolutely. to happen. So. Cool. All right. What yeah. else? Anything hey, else? I, I appreciate you guys coming down and hey, yeah. doing this every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, so much fun. Um, I appreciate Crash and Bash having an actual race director. Yes. That takes <laughs> yeah. a lot of load off Thank a lot of the guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan, for Thank everything you. you do here. And See, look ran at the Dust- races all day today. And Dustin's over there with a smile on his face and like, yeah. relaxed <laughs> instead, of, instead of all freaked out all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not saying that I will be here for every single race, every single time, because I do need a life at some point. Nah, <laughs> and I don't want you, all no, my Saturdays to be no, eaten up fine. at work. I love this, though. This is a lot of fun to me. I love racing. I love racing the RC cars. But I will say that I have almost as much fun calling the races and uh, watching some of the racing yep. as I do. Yeah. And, I, and I get to do a lot of cool stuff, too, like the YouTube page. I'm getting that all going. 
I've been working on uh, doing different camera angles. So it's getting fancy. I know, right? It's been uh, it's been a lot really. I like cool. that I can I can look at live RC even yeah. in the middle of the night when nobody's here. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We leave exactly. it on twenty four seven. So because at one point I was like, should I shut this down? I'm nah. like, nah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I I do it too every once in a while. Like, yeah, let's see how it's up with the track. We like <laughs> logging on during the work week. Make sure you're here working. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go, what's the upcoming schedule? So that way, anybody yeah. that listens to this can actually hear. Yeah, we got coming. so much stuff going on. So, uh, overall events, or are we talking just racing? Well, I mean, let's just cover it all. <laughs> let's, yeah. So, let's start with racing. Next week is off-road, so we'll have a Thursday and Saturday race. Um, and then after that, it'll be oval again. So, two weeks of that. As far as all of our events, we have so much stuff going on. On Sunday, we've got a cooking crawl, so starting at 5 o'clock down at Lake McBride. And then Tuesday, we have Sprocket League. Yeah. Which is awesome, right? <laughs> Somebody needs to that. give me a car for that. I want to get down. Loaners. We've got nice. loaners. I've got Perfect. three slashes. I'll let you nice. use one if you come down on a Tuesday nice. night. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. So it's a anybody that doesn't know, it's a spinoff of Rocket League for the all the different gaming systems, right? But uh, we do it with real cars, right? Real RC cars. And this week, I may try something even more special. Uh-oh. I may throw up the uh, the tabletop in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to jump on and jump yes. off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna. Can you imagine like the, like the ball getting up into the it, air and somebody coming off the tabletop? One hundred percent. Like just, I want to see that. It's gonna be all cool. Day long. Just throw right. the jumps out there randomly wherever. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was another thought. So, but I think I'm gonna start with just having the tabletop in the no, middle. So be a riot. when like we're that. gonna start the start the ball in, on the tabletop jumps. No, I guess another thing to mention is you guys got a calendar on the website too that people can go look at. Look at you. Plug in my stuff. What a good guy. <laughs> Crashandbashhobbies.com, right? Absolutely. Yep. Crashandbashhobbies.com slash trackside. So you click on the trackside banner, and then under the schedule, that has all of our events. It says race schedule, but it's everything. Listen, yeah. having mm-hmm. an actual website is good because not right. everybody has Facebook. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Most most civilized people have what? Facebook, Chris. <laughs> I don't know about that anymore. It's getting less and less civilized out there. I Nobody think. wants to be zucked. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's. I think that we'll just call it a wrap. We'll just have a nice, easy one and and just go along with it. See if I can actually get the music to play here. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. Hey. For everything. We're always having a good time around. So absolutely. Yeah. If you guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, of course you can hit up Ryan anytime. Events at crashandbash.com. And you does who like who's on the the messages for Facebook? It's the guys in the shop most time, right? So I I get them too. Aaron and Forrest generally take care of most of them. I get them too. But yeah, Yeah. if uh, you have anything specific for me, events. At crashandbash.com. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's Eric and Chris and Ryan and myself, Nick. We'll uh, see you guys see you later. later. Peace out. Later.